Hi everybody in Mrs. Keck's class. Welcome to our painting day. Today we're going to do a birch tree painting and to start off we're going to need a paper or a canvas. Mine is an 8 by 12, pardon me, 8 by 10 canvas. We're going to need a paintbrush and at the end we're going to need a marker preferably a fine tip marker and we need some paint we're going to use pink blue and yellow paint my yellow is a bit bright so I've added some white to it but I haven't mixed it in yet I also mixed a bit of white with my blue and my pink and we're going to combine these two we're going to make a purple with them eventually I have a pencil and a paper towel and a container of water to swish my brush out and we have tape so to start off with we're going to put tape on our canvas I have some wide tape some medium width tape and some skinny tape I found this skinny tape at the dollar store so we're going to put five pieces of tape on our canvas going from the top to the bottom. We're going to wrap the tape around the top. I'm going to start with the biggest piece of tape. So I'm going to put my biggest tree, this is going to be a white tree, off center a little bit. So I'm going to go top to bottom and I'm going to give it a bit of an angle. Oops. <laughs> whoopsie daisy I want to make sure it's stuck down really good set the so I'm going to rub it at the top I'm going to rub it on my canvas so it sticks down there so this is my papa tree we're going to call it the daddy tree because he's big this will be the mama tree it's going to be uh, together at the bottom and separated at the top. So you kind of make a letter V, a little bit of a letter V. And again, you just want to press it down so it stays on nice, nice and tight to the canvas. We don't want any paint to leak underneath there. If it does, it's no big deal, but that's our, our optimal goal. And then the little bits of tape Hopefully this sticks, I did get it at the dollar store. So I'm going to put three. I'm going to put one here. And birch trees, this is birch trees. They kind of grow in a clump, so together at the bottom and they spread out at the top. I might need scissors for this. Oh, can I rip it off? Oh yeah, that's tough tape. So there's three. I'm going to do another one here. Let's spread them out a little bit. Where do I want it? Maybe I'm going to go like that. After I just told you they grow in a clump. Oh, this is tough tape. I'm just trying to rip it off here. So there's the big tree, the mama tree, two little trees, and I'm going to put a little tree on this side too. And I'm going to give it a good angle. There. Rip that tape off. I wasn't prepared with scissors over here. So there we have five pieces of tape on our canvas. We want to stick them all down really, really good. And we're going to do a really pretty sky. We're going to start with blue. We're going to go down to pink and then to yellow at the bottom. It could be a spring sky. It could be a winter sky. Whatever you choose to make it. So to start painting, I take my paintbrush 
and I'm gonna dip it in my water. That's gonna help my paint smooth, move around a little bit. And I'm going to dip my paint brush into the paint and get some paint on it. And when you're painting, you don't wanna load your brush all the way to the metal. That's called the furl. So keep the paint at the top of your paintbrush like that. But I have quite a bit on there, you can see. So I'm gonna start at the very top of my canvas and I'm just going to go back and forth. Make sure my tape is down. Back and forth. Hmm, I don't know how good this pink tape's gonna stick. Back and forth. We're gonna go down about a quarter of the way down our canvas. So you can see the top part of my canvas. So if I divide it into four, one, two, three, a little bit more than a quarter, almost a third, I guess, that's okay. A third of the way down, I'm blending that out. Now I'm not even gonna clean my brush and I'm going to get my pink paint. So those of you, uh, maybe some of you know what you get when you mix pink and blue. Come back up a little bit, it makes purple. So I'm just blending the pink into the blue and then I'm bringing my pink down. Got a little bit more paint, I was running out there. I think my pink paint is a little thicker than my blue paint was, so that's okay. So I'm bringing down my pink. Now I'm gonna mix my brush, because when I get my yellow, I don't want purple and yellow because that will make a real ugly brown. So I'm gonna mix my brush so I don't get purple and yellow together. Mix it up really good. And I'm going to dab it on my paper towel. Oh, that made a shadow. Anyway, so I'm gonna dab my paintbrush off on my paper towel. And I'm going to get some of my yellow, but like I said, my yellow is too bright, so I wanted to mix a little bit of white with it. Okay, and I'm gonna start over top of the pink. I'm going to blend that in and not solidly. I kind of want a few lines of it. Can you see that? Ooh. There we go. And pink and orange or pink and yellow make a really pretty orangey color. So now I'm going to go back into my paint and get some more white with the yellow and it'll be a little bit lighter because I've not brought the pink down that far. So isn't that a pretty sky? We get some beautiful sunrises and sunsets around here, don't we? Really beautiful. So, it's a little bit different Mrs. Keck than the last time we painted together. I'm only going to bring my yellow down to about here. I'm going to leave, let's see, if I was in grade two, it might be a hand width. For me, it's about three fingers. I'm gonna leave three fingers measurement of white at the bottom of my canvas. See that? Now I'm gonna look at my canvas and I'm gonna decide, hmm. Do I want to add or change anything? And I've decided I'm going to take some of this light yellow, just a little bit of ye light yellow, and I'm going to bring it up here. Kind of like a little cloud that's lit by the sun. And a little bit more up here. Just a little bit. Ooh, that's pretty, hey? <clears throat> And I'm gonna take a little bit of my pink and I'm gonna bring it into the blue. 
Oh, that's lovely. A little bit heavier there. I could bring a little bit of the pink down here a bit more too into the yellow. Now the sunsets, oh, they're so beautiful. I have to admit, I don't see too many sunrises. <laughs> I'm not a morning person. Okay. Now, when you decide you like what you see, I really like that. I hope you like yours too. Oh, I see a little bit of paint missing here. I'm going to rinse my brush and get some of my blue and fill that in. There. That's better. Okay. So this is a really fun magic trick. And we're going to peel the paint off now. So I'm going to just get the end of my tape and I'm going to pull it up, up, and back. I have a little bit of an edge there. I'll show you what we can do if you have that. This pink tape didn't stick as good as I thought it would. Okay, green tape next. Come on, green tape. Nice. That's painter's tape, it works really good. I hope you guys are having fun. Mrs. Keck can stop the video when you need to catch up. Here comes the pop of tape, the big tape. Isn't that cool? That looks so cool too, doesn't it? <laughs> and the little pink guys on this side. This is stuck down good here. Hopefully it's stuck good all the way. Oh. There's a little blue up there too. I hope you're not getting dizzy. And my goodness. I'm going to, there. Okay. So there are trees, the white part, that's like going to be our birch trees. And if you have a glob of paint like I do, I rinsed out my brush and I wiped it off. And I'm just going to pick up that paint with my brush, wipe it off. Gonna pick it up a little bit more. Oh, I have to rinse my brush out. Rinse it off. There. And a little bit here. My pink tape wasn't very sticky. Maybe it's best to stick to painter's tape. I don't even know what they call that pink stuff. I bumped my camera. Okay. So here we go. Now. What I'm doing, I'm just rinsing my brush off. And I'm trying to lift that paint with my clean paint brush. So I swipe the paint and wipe it off, swipe the paint and wipe it off. I kind of want to leave this, the trees white. That's what I'm doing this for. All right. Now that looks really good. Now this is a little bit different. I've actually never done this one, Mrs. Keck, but I thought it would be fun. <laughs> You're, I'm experimenting with you. I'm gonna take my pencil and where the papa tree is, I'm going to bring it forward. So I'm going to just continue that line down a little bit like that. I want you to see. So just where the white ends, I just brought my line down a little bit, like half an inch or a couple of centimeters. And then I'm going to give it a little curve at the bottom. Like that. Mama tree, I'm going to do the same. Bring it down a little bit and a little curve at the bottom. These little trees, 
I'm going to bring this one a little bit further with a little curve at the bottom. It's kind of like a little smile, like you would put a smile on a face. And a little curve. And then this one, going this way, he's got a little curve too. So this white is going to represent our snow. And the sunset is behind our trees, so it's going to cast a shadow coming towards us. I'm going to switch to a little bit smaller of a brush. Uh, I'd like to have it here. Sorry guys, I should be more prepared. Uh, you know what, I'm just going to do it with the one I showed you with. And I'll show you how to do it. Okay. So the shadow is often a purpley color. We're going to mix a little bit of our blue paint and a little bit of our pink paint until we get a purple that we like. Can you? Hopefully you can see that. I like that purple. Hopefully that's enough. I think I need a bit more paint. A little blue, a little pink. We make ourselves a very nice purple. Okay. Now I don't want my paint to be too heavy. I want this to be a shadow. So I'm going to rinse my brush out and leave it a little bit wet. I'm just going to dab it on one side. I'm going to pick up some of my purple paint. And I'm deciding that my shadows are going to come this way. I'm going to go to the right, down and to the right. I'm going to start with my biggest tree. So I'm going to go under the tree, smile, and I'm going to bring it this way. So it's about as the thickness of the tree. The mama tree, I'm going to go under the tree, smile. And I have to be careful, so I'm just going to use the edge of my brush. Maybe your brush is littler. And I'm going to make my tree shadow. The same as this baby tree, I'm going to come under the smile of the tree. This tree, this little... Maybe it's a sister tree or a brother tree. And if your shadow has a wiggle in it, that's okay. Maybe the snow has a little uh, heap in it, you know, like a, a ridge. And this one, I'm going to bring it like that. So there, looks like the sun behind the trees and uh, the shadows on the snow. So now I'm going to rinse my brush really good again. And I'm going to leave it fairly wet. I want this paint to look like you can see through it. Let's see. I don't know if you can tell. I can see my plate through it. It's, it's quite watery, watery and thin. So I kind of mix it with my brush until it's see-through. Hopefully that makes sense. You don't want a, too much water, but it's kind of see-through. So with my see-through paint, I think that's thin enough. Maybe I need a bit more blue in there. Really, really thin. Watery, watery paint. I'm going to go down the right side of my trees, not at, to the very, very edge, but just down here. It's okay if there's a little wiggle in it. The trees have a little wiggle in it. Down to the shadow. And the same on the mama tree. And the same on the baby trees. You don't want to cover up the whole tree. You just want the shadow to be on the right side of the tree. Need a bit more paint there.
You could use a little darker blue if you want to. You can hear Mr. Lake upstairs making supper. He's cooking a nice roast beef supper for us tonight. And his specialty is Yorkshire pudding. That's what he's doing. Okay, so we have our shadows on the trees. I'm going to rinse my brush and dab the paint off, the water off. And I'm going to make my brush wide like this and I'm going to blend the edge of that shadow out. So I didn't want it to be a solid line. Hopefully that makes sense to you. There. I'm going to blend that out on the daddy tree and I'm going to blend it out on the mummy tree too. So I just have a, whoop, a wet paintbrush, a damp paintbrush, not too wet. And I'm just going to go over, over that shadow line so it's not a solid one. These little guys, I don't care so much. They're, they're going to be fine. Now, before we use our marker on these trees, we want it to dry really good. So you can use a blow dryer. You can wait until your next class. Come back for your next class. I'm going to... Um, let's see, we're 21 minutes still. Okay. I am going to try to edit these two together. I'm going to blow on these. Craft paint or acrylic paint is what I'm using. Isn't that cool so far, you guys? It's really, really, I love it. Super, super love it. Um, so I don't know if you know what a birch tree looks like. I'll show you one in the next video, I think. But it, they have like little lines on them and little knots on them. And we're going to use the marker to create those. This is a fine point Sharpie. Okay, you can use a black pencil if you have one. Hopefully you have um, a Sharpie or something that you can use to create this. Um, and I'm going to shut this video off and make sure this is dry before I start. If you try to use these fine tip Sharpies on wet paint, they'll be broken. You won't be able to use them anymore. So I'm going to let that dry.